Yo everybody, my name is Grandpa Space and in this video there's gonna be a lot of death, carnage, and penalty serves. Stay tuned. So first things first, like almost in every video right now, I'm gonna need to buy a car that is basically designed for this track that I'm gonna drive, which is Dragon Trail with a death chicane at Seaside. Now speaking of new cars, I had my birthday very very recently this month and I wanted to get a car for both my accounts and the first car as you can see right here, thank you very much game for wishing me a happy birthday, is the Amuse S2000 GT1 Turbo and the other car is the Subaru WRX Group B road car. Now of course I needed to buy tires for my Nissan GTR which is of course the 2013 Nissan GTR and get myself a FedEx livery because of course as I've mentioned in one of the previous videos I used to be a truck driver. Now thank you very much for Alan for making this livery and thank you very much. So I wanted to gauge my pace in this track but I couldn't pause in time and I accidentally set a very bad time so as I'm gonna keep on practicing and I'm not gonna set a qualifying lap time for this as you're gonna see there's gonna be a lot of barrier collisions seems like I really really like barrier and this car is not a happy one I would say it's very mean very aggressive very hard to control especially over those curves the rear end really really likes to slide and the death chicane is no exception and of course in these S's as well, this was not very easy to control honestly. Well, after this impressive spin, I did try and go for a good qualifying lap. And I think I managed to nail it. I think the trick is to just upshift early onto third gear and be a little bit less aggressive with the throttle in this car as we're going to go into this right hander right over here as you can see second gear changing it right into third and it's much easier to accelerate like that as we carry on we're gonna go down into the s's and this is a pretty tricky part to nail right but the main thing about this is to really do it flat out if you manage to get it flat out and not beyond the track limits or manage to spin you're gonna get a really good time over here and as we're going to go into the 150 board, we're going to break and go into this hairpin, which as you can see, I do change into third again. But this car is very hard to manage on the controller. It just really likes to spin. And as we get into the famous death chicane, we're going to get it actually pretty good without touching the wall to the left. And that was actually pretty impressive on my part right here. Now as we're going to carry on into this end of this straight I'm gonna break right before the 100 board, change it into second just for the rotation, get it back to third, full throttle, and we're gonna go right into the finish line and see exactly what is more or less gonna be my time, which is 137.0, I guess add like a couple more tenths, which is a big improvement over 139.5, I would say. That's like two seconds right there, easy, taken off. But of course before we move on I wanted to practice a little bit more and as you can see it didn't really go very well. So going on to the first race and we're gonna start at the very bottom because I did manage to get to DRA in the last video and as you're gonna see right here Lazy Joker 14 is on the BRZ which is not a good choice in my opinion since it's very weak on the straight right here and I do manage to get the run done before we even get to turn one. Now jumping onto Need for Weed, you can see he gets it all sorts of wrong and going back to me right here, we do see why they managed to drop so many positions and they did manage to break over here. I broke and lifted a little bit of my braking and because of that, I accidentally bumped right into them and Lazy Joker is right back at it and they're gonna tuck right behind me because the car is not very powerful and we need for weed and carbot are gonna have a little bit of a skirmish between them i lift a little bit so i won't hit carbot over there 
and give them enough space over there. Jumping onto Carbot's perspective, and we can see El Renuevo and Yellow Jacket had their own little thing. I have no idea exactly what happened between them. And as you can see from Lady Joker's perspective, Carbot and myself are gonna go side by side into this hurt bin, but they're gonna have a way better exit than myself. I didn't want to spin out, so I had to lift a little bit. And we're gonna go into the Death Chicane for the first time in a race right here. And as we go into Lazy Joker's perspective, I hit the wall onto the right, very, very close indeed, and they hit me from behind. They get no damage whatsoever, and I unfortunately had gotten damage from the wall on the left. Now, as we're gonna carry on right here, Yellow Jacket is actually right behind me, and they're doing a really good job of keeping up. Going into their perspective, into this right hander, they're gonna get it really, really nice. I'm gonna have it a little bit of all sorts of wrong right there, and they managed to pass me. I didn't wanna fight it before the S's, so I lift up a little bit, and we live to fight another day. Now, as we go into the S's right here, there is a yellow flag that means there's another death. Now, as we come onto this uphill right here, we're gonna slow it down a little bit. Type RBR, something happened to them, and it seems like they're very slow, and they rage quit the game. Not only that, the game leaves me a very nice present of ignoring a yellow flag, three second penalty, and is Yellow Jacket gonna have the same? No, they're not. It seems like the game was pretty selective here, and just wanted to choose me and give me a 3 second penalty and not yellow jacket which I find very very weird honestly because we were very close to each other like less than a 5 temps or 4 temps away from each other which didn't really add up to me and the driver in the last position of this race actually calls out for us to wait for them so I thought it would be funny to say roger that since you know I don't think anybody would but yeah they're very far away Jumping onto the next lap, Chromo Dynamic has pitted, and that's why I gained another position. And I do hit the barrier once again. And this death chicane is really, really hard to maneuver. And Chromo Dynamic is right behind me. I wanted to indicate to the right so they'll know that I'm gonna pit this lap. So don't try to overtake me, there's no need. I'm just gonna pit right here. And in this race, I forgot to mention, you do need to use the hard tire compound and the medium tire compound. They're both mandatory. If you don't use both, you get a whopping of a one minute penalty when you cross the line. So I got a new Treads trophy right here from PlayStation 4. And as we carry on right here, with my one half second penalty onto the Death Chicane once again, am I gonna get it all sorts of wrong? Possibly, yes but hopefully not, and I actually get it pretty well done right here, but I do need to serve the penalty. Now, El Renuevo here had to pit, that's why they were not last anymore, but now they're gonna be in the last position, and I'm gonna fly by and keep on, since this is lap number nine out of 10. And after they went into the pits, we jump onto the last, lap into the finish line and as you can see i couldn't really reel in harbot over there it was a pretty difficult race i have to admit this gtr is very difficult to control so i just thought to myself you know what i'm gonna buy the amg it's a really all-rounder type balanced car but i didn't have enough money to buy tires so i did the dragon trail circuit experience right here so i could get enough money to buy all the tires that are needed for this car in the future as we jump right in to practice session with this AMG, it's going to be a pretty common theme to hit the barrier in all sorts of positions in this track. But eventually I managed to do a 138.0. In the next attempts, as you can see, I crash into the wall. And am I going to manage to get the death chicane? Well, poof. whoa, that was very, very close actually. But it seems like I did manage to do that and improve to a 136.8. And the next following attempt, I actually managed to improve once more and get into 136.4, which is a solid time for my driving rating. I do believe so myself. So after that, I went online and got a new livery made by Chris Duve from France, which is a really good livery of the W14, the Formula 1 car, that's going to be presented in the next season of Formula 1. Jumping into the next race, 
and as you can see that time actually made me get into p3 which is pretty good actually now something i noticed with this car this car had a really good launch right off the bat and also if you've noticed the weather around has also changed this daily race actually had a dynamic weather but it did not feature any rain whatsoever as i say that i do get into the back of Lyoto right here and cortez managed to sneak up and get my position Lyoto get it almost all sorts of wrong managed to save it right here before the s's and is also lagging a little bit which did put me off just a tiny bit but as we can see right here they're having a big skirmish to top three over here in the s's which is not advisable to go side by side at all but they somehow managed to kind of make it work while having some contact in between cortez and alex album and as we go right into the right over here into this hairpin and we're gonna tuck right behind leoto right here and i do lift a little bit so I can have a little bit of space in between but they all do break a little bit which gives us the opportunity to have a little bit of a run over Lyoto right here and behind me Sativa is actually going to punt me a little bit and give me a bump trap which is very much appreciated but I did overcook this turn right here and you can see in the radar they're going to have their own little skirmish behind as we carry on right into turn number one and i i think the brakes here are a little bit worse than the gtr or something but never mind about that you just clip the grass just a tiny little bit and you do an unwanted 360 spin and not only that why not collect a one and a half second penalty from the barrier collision and that puts me all the way from p4 onto p12 which is not really good thing to see but as we carry on right here we can see martin has gone off and crashed onto the barrier and also it seems like they left the game with alex albon so as we carry on right here there's gonna be a massive crash with Hus that dictator and i'm gonna serve this penalty right here which is one and a half second penalty that dictator is gonna go right past me and actually turn right over there if i would have been just like 20 meters ahead it would have completely go right into me but as we carry on into turn number one i'm gonna try and look into the inside but it doesn't really work out and i put too much throttle here i had to lift off and live to fight another day so i won't get out of the circuit now fernandez over there has had it all sorts of wrong i'm not sure really what happened over there but i'm right behind them and they get it a little bit wrong over here they overcooked the turn and i managed to go side by side over there and managed to get the job done right before the s's and they tuck right behind me uh, but they do go for the push to pass maneuver which is not a very clean thing to do but i do get a better run over the s's right over here and bravo is gonna join in the fight right here in the three of us i'm gonna go defensive into the hairpin so they won't be able to get it and I park it beautifully right here so they won't be able to manage any old switcheroo and I managed to get the job done. Into the death chicane we go once more again and I really hope I'll be able to survive this one while still going pretty fast and I actually do but we're gonna skip just a little bit the dictator here has served their penalty and they're gonna try and block me off here but they didn't manage to. I'm gonna go for the all switcheroo right here but i do need to go and pit to change into the medium tires and as we go we get out of the pits we are b11 and we're going to carry on onto the depth chicane right here on the same lap and right behind the brazilian right here and i do that that was so close i do manage to get the run over them and i wanted to go to the right but i thought to myself i have enough speed i can just go onto the outside take the regular racing line and have no problem of overtaking them which i do overcook it just a little bit but we carry on nevertheless and the dictator actually pitted in this lap and they are going to come out out of the pit lanes with their mediums and i do manage to actually get alongside and pass them with not much of a problem get into second gear 
and manage to capitalize over that. Going to the death chicane once again. We go, oof, whoa! That's a big slide over there, but it does invite the dictator right behind me to try and get the job done. Are they gonna manage to hit me once again and swipe me? Yes, they do. It seems like it's very hard for them at the moment to go side by side into a corner. Which is understandable, you know, it's not dirty driving, it's just bad driving, which is completely fine. And as we go into the death chicane, once again, I get it all sorts of wrong, and I come out of it not really with a lot of damage. The dictator also had a moment over there, and Fernandez is actually gonna capitalize on all of this. I do hit Root right behind, and honestly, I didn't mean to do that, but... The game decides, you know what, that's a big no-no, you don't do that. You get another two second penalty added to one and a half, and it goes to three and a half second penalty. We're gonna go into the death chicane once again, right before we serve the penalty, and I get it all sorts of wrong, mainly because of dirtier, and as we zoom right here, we can see the dictator just completely vanished, and as we all know, that's a rage quit right there. So serving five second penalty right here, which is so long, like years in racing time and going into the death chicane one last time my tires are completely dead and as you can see right here root got it completely wrong and they're just having a big nice take with the death chicane gonna finish in p7 and i think that's gonna be one of my cursed positions if there are a lot of drivers who are getting sixth so jumping into the next race I'm gonna start in P2 this time, right behind Lyoto, and we know Lyoto is very quick. An A-plus driver right here, and as you can see, as I've said before, there's a great run right at the start of this race. And we're gonna go side by side onto the first turn right here, and I accidentally overcook it right here. I tried to leave enough space for Lyoto, but card got unsettled a little bit and I did go to the right of Neville here but Neville backed out of this and reasonably so that's the smart thing to do you don't want to go too wide in that corner as we're gonna carry on into this turn I am gonna take the grass route and then the car is just gonna decide you know what control what is that no we're just gonna completely lose control and collect a one and a half second penalty dropped to stone dead last and I guess in this race it's a last to first challenge but as we can see right here Severo Pez has a three second penalty most likely from hitting two barriers and I serve my one and a half second penalty from earlier going to the death chicane next lap once again we had a yellow flag right here that means someone got it off all wrong and Vic has a six pe second penalty that means they hit the barrier at least four times that is pretty nuts as we go into this right hander we can see Bravo this time is really hugging barrier and having a very very nice date with them Root is gonna go into the pits on the third lap right here they're gonna change from hards to mediums as I carry on we get into seventh position but next lap, I'm gonna go into the pits myself and we're gonna come out in P10 so far. Root is just gonna fly right past me, gonna drop me off to P11 and we're gonna jump into the hairpin right here. Now, I didn't want to go into the back of Root so I just tried to completely escape them because I completely overcooked that turn. And as we can see, Root here is using their signal lights to say thank you for the sportsmanship that you did not pump me off, use me as a brake shield. Thank you very much. As we go into the death chicane, TSA right here is gonna go reverse in a straight and I'm gonna say thank you to Root for sticking to the left as much as they can but of course there was a yellow flag and I did overtake Root so the game just told me hey 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 you're gonna get a 3 second penalty for that and Root actually has broke way too late me from behind but they're waiting for me to pass them which is great sportsmanship between Root and myself clean racing I really enjoyed racing with Root over here now we're gonna hit the wall twice right here with Severo Pez and Root is just gonna say thank you very much two positions in one corner that's really really good thank you so as I'm gonna 
serve my penalty here. TSA is also serving their own penalty, and it seems like I'm not last yet unless I unsettle the car right here, and TSA is just gonna fly past me. Not a problem. I'm gonna jump into lap number nine, right behind Mark and TSA. TSA here is actually going to get it all sorts of wrong. Just clip the grass just a little bit over there. And I'm going to have a way better exit after the death chicane on Mark. And going right into the last corner. Into this long straight. Into the finish line. I get to get P9 in this one. As you can also see, my SR went down from S to A. But we're going to jump into this race, which was actually very, very fun. And we're going to go straight into it to the first corner. It was going to be very nice sportsmanship driving between the both of Bruno and myself, leaving both space available for both of us. And as we're going to go into the S's right here, it seems like El Gangui over here has clipped the sand over there and completely unsettled the car. They're going to hit Barrier, going to give me P3 for that. And as we're going to carry on to the next lap into the death chicane, Bruno right behind me is going to have a way better exit and they're going to use the slipstream with the great, great, great braking of the Porsche right there. And we're going to go side by side. It's going to be a tiny bit of contact, but nothing major right here. But as we carry on into this main straight, we're going to go side by side all the way on to turn number one. And we're both going to break in just in time, but their braking is just way superior than myself. They do slide a little bit, and I do bump draft them. Well, I couldn't really break in time, actually. It totally caught me off guard. And as we're going to go into lap number three, the end of lap number three, Bruno here is going to go right into the pits. I'm sure they're having, they're on their hard tires, yes they are, and going into the death chicane right here, somebody has gone it completely wrong, and Hop right here got it completely wrong, they were leading the race right here, and as we're gonna jump just a little bit further into the race, I'm gonna go into the pits once more, change my boots, and carry on into lap number 5, right at the end of it. We're gonna go into the straight and as we can see Bruno here actually has a one and a half second penalty and as we jump into lap number six into this great great hairpin we can see Bruno and Jose is actually gonna they're both gonna have a little bit of a skirmish between them beautiful beautiful driving from Jose they did back out of the death chicane here because that is the sensible thing to do you don't want to go too wide right over here and Jose actually took the safe route which they did break a little bit and I have a better run over here. Bruno is going to serve their penalty. And as we skip onto the next lap right here, before turn number one, I'm going to have the move over to Jose. And actually nothing happened right after that move. And I managed to finish in P2 in this good race. And if you want to check the unedited edition of this race is in the link down in the description down below. And as you can see, it was a 20 second gap from Lyoto and P325 were like 10 seconds away from me so that's actually pretty good in my opinion as we're gonna jump again into a qualifying lap time this is my best lap and I'm very very proud of myself going here trying to push myself as much as I can going into this right hander barely even lifting and punching the brakes going right and accelerating gradually and pretty quickly onto this uphill and going downhill into these S's gonna break just a little bit here so I could clip the apex go full throttle onto this S's section and as we're gonna carry on right here I hit every apex beautifully beautifully done and we're gonna go downhill right here before the hairpin I'm gonna break just after the 150 board and we're gonna go into second gear right here gonna accelerate as fast as I can and abuse the track limit as much as I can. I'm gonna go into the depth chicane, gonna barely lift here actually, and gonna cut it very closely. Holy crap, that was so tight over there. And as we can see, as we get to go, I'm gonna break right before the 100 board here, change into second, and gonna 
punch the acceleration. Just <laughs> wow, that <laughs> that was so tight in the depth chicane over there. Like wow, look at it. Looking at it from here, I managed to do a 136.0. And that was the fastest lap I could have gotten with this car. Now, Little Scun is actually quicker than myself by one tenth, but they are very, very quick. Over here, we're gonna go, and I didn't really want to go for this move because we literally just started, and that would invite the whole pack behind us, which is not something I would rather do. But as we carry on onto the S's, onto Jum's 21 perspective, we can see that I got it a little bit wrong, and also Seamus got it wrong, and that will invite Jumps to go side by side into the hairpin with me right over here. I'm gonna be on the outside, and they gotta get the job done, and mainly because Lil Scun and Jumps are on the medium tires, and I'm on the hards, and I'm gonna tuck myself right into this right side of the road so I can get into the pit lane change into mediums and I really like how the fast motion changes the pitch of the engines and as we get out of the pit lane I'm gonna have my mediums on and Porotto here is gonna fly right past me and that's gonna put me into P12 and as we carry on right here I'm gonna go very quickly behind Porotto as we advance right before the S's. I wanted to get past Porotto as fast as I could, but it is very difficult being behind someone in the S's with dirty air, which affects your ability to steer more, and I, I really wanted to get past them very quickly, so I will have my fight against the top three, and as we can see, they overcook it right in the hairpin. That gives me the door open to make this pass possible in a very easy fashion as we carry on onto the death chicane and we can see the leader actually has pitted which I would have pitted in lap number six if I had the mediums right from the start and as we're gonna jump ahead to lap number six Tito here is going very wide giving me the opportunity to overtake them pretty easily and as we carry on right here onto the S's, I will see that Capone is also having their own issues with the S's and that's gonna burn a lot of tire wear. And as we jump on to lap number seven into the death chicane right behind Speedy Boy and Lil Scun is right in the distance as we're gonna go right here. Lil Scun is gonna get it all sorts of wrong. They're gonna get a three second penalty for hitting the barrier twice which does make me get into the podium and as we can see Jumps has actually pitted and Speedy Boy is indicating that they are going to go into the pits right here so I'm not even going to fight it lifting just a little bit so I can pass them cleanly and as we're going to carry on into this long straight Jumps over here is going to come out in the hards into this long straight and I'm going just to pass them by easy does it and that is gonna give me first place and not much happens after that all I had to do is just to survive they had a lot of fighting in behind and as I'm gonna cross the line in first position I'm gonna win this race with the Mercedes actually which I'm very very happy of and very proud of myself of doing that managing to take the win over another A plus driver, a very quick one I must say. And if you want to watch all the unedited versions of these races in a bonus race which was not shown here, check out the description down below and I'll see y'all in the next one.